اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نحمد ہو و نسلی اللہ رسول الکریم ناو ڈیز وی آر ڈسکسنگ ہسٹری آف یحیٰ علیہ السلام وی ہیو کورڈ ٹو لیکچرس اینڈ ناؤ ٹوڈے از دی تھرڈ ون اینڈ دس از دی کنکلوڈنگ ون ان شاء اللہ now we have reached the st- stage where we are going to discuss the execution of hazrat yahya alai salam why he was beheaded how he was beheaded and what happened after that but before we go to discuss that there is very important point to understand that hazrat zakariya alai salam had made a dua for a varis for aulad for zuriyatan one who can take over his mission and he is killed in his youth the only son which has been given especially from allah subhanahu wa taala allah subhanahu wa taala named him he made him his prophet and in his youth and during his entire life he was in a trial and then he is taken away and same is the case of Isa alayhi salam that he was given uh, as a very very special uh, creation on this planet ever in the history and the uh, uh, grandfather of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam father of Maryam had also made a dua grandmother mother of maryam alayhi salam she had also made a dua for aulad and he is given to them and then in his youth he is taken away and with such a great trial what was their dua and how it happened and whether the objective of the dua was obtained or not this is more important what they wanted the objective of the dua was obtained was achieved or not all along we find that in the dua of the mother of maryam alai salam in father of maryam alai salam and hazrat zakir alai salam there is no personal element involved all of them are making a dua that their progeny their zuriyatan will be working in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in whatever manner he wants. Hurian, Hurian. Mother of Maryam alayhi salam says that I will make the baby, whatever is born to me, make him, make him or her, but she is, she is not using the gender there, that uh, will be dedicated, devoted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In order to achieve the objective, of the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the same which Zakariya alayhi salam is making that uh, they will achieve my mission which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has given. They will spread the word of God. Now look at the achievements of both these persons. Though they, we find that they were killed in their youth. They, had, they were not married. They had no progeny. Did the history stop there? No. Before Isa alayhi salam and Yahya alayhi salam, we find that as the stories go, there's no written record in the Quran, but the narration tell us that there were more than 100,000 prophets. And if we take at least from Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, thousands of prophets. What they had achieved, the, if there were difficulties, And till then, the religion was only within Alibad. It was within all. It was within tribes. It has not yet even become a qawm till Hazrat Musa a.s. And after that, we find that it is spread as a qawm. Because the word qawm is used with Musa a.s. But after that, after the sacrifices of these two prophets, we find that that the deen of Ibrahim is universalized. And the uh, results today, they are before you, that Christianity is the biggest denomination 
among the uh, religions of uh, Ibrahim a.s. This is the achievement. And this was their dua, that the mission of Zakaria a.s., which is for the spread of word of God should spread, should go ahead. And same was for Yahya a.s., same was for Hazrat Isa a.s., and they did it, they achieved it. We have to uh, see that what was the content and what was the objective of the dua and how it was obtained. It is not that the that their dua was not accepted and they all died and they were killed rather very brutally in their youth. So now keeping that in mind, I had also well, last time discussed a small uh, a small aspect, uh, I mean, aspect that when the uh, when uh, this uh, transition was taking place from Alibeth and all to universalization of religion. And another book was being given in continuation, in correction, in uh, improvement of Torah. Then what was the need of sending, bringing in Yahya alayhi salam? Hadar Isa alayhi salam was give, coming. He was going to be given in Injil. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew it. Yet he also launched Hazrat Yahya alayhi salam. Look at the generosity Karam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Fazal of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that how he redesigns things, Mujib. That when Zakaria alayhi salam is making a dua, he's accepting it. He doesn't tell him that now I'm sending another Nabi and whatever your objective, that will be achieved, that Isa will achieve this and I'll compensate you in some other way. Okay, I'm giving you a son who may be obedient to you in your home. In your home matters, but no, he is giving him a Nabi. That is a very important aspect of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when accepts dua, he accepts dua with all the magnanimity, with all the generosity, with all the fuzzle. He accepts it. He accepts it. And he made him a Nabi. And Yahya alayhi salam has the honor, privilege, and the distinction that he stands between the Old Testament and the New Testament. He is the connection between Torah and Injil. Now, why and how he was executed? Hazar Yahya salam was beheaded by Herod. Herod is the title, king. The name was Antipas. I will further explain when we discuss Hazrat uh, Isa alayhi salam. At that time, there was uh, there were four kings. There was a confederation, sort of a confederation, and then above that was the Roman Empire. So under the Roman Empire, Herod was one of the kings, and he was king of Judea. And he was designated as the king of Jews. In fact, his father was designated as the king of Jews. He was known as the Herod the Great because he had reconquered, conquered by Judea from Parthians, Persians. Parthians had uh, defeated Romans and they had taken away, taken over Judea. And when Herod had himself again conquered back, he was named as Herod the Great. And he was uh, given the title king of Jews and this title, this politics is the center point on which Hazrat Isa alayhi salam was tried, king of Jews. And he was, uh, uh, I mean, uh, there are many other uh, aspects of this we'll discuss after that. And Herod the Great, he is the person who had this is the name given in the history. I don't mean that he is the great, but this is the name which was given to him by the Roman emperor and by the history. Herod the Great is the person who had reconstructed the masjid in, in Jerusalem, which was afterwards destroyed by the Roman emperor during the period of the Roman emperor Vespasian. And it was physically, who was the general who was commanding on the spot, his son, Titus, Roman emperor, he also became the emperor. So 
this is the background that Herod was the king. His name was Antipas, and it was around 30 AD, almost near the period after a few years, for four years, almost four years, Hazrat Yahya al-Islam was also executed. Yahya al-Islam had rebuked the king. And what was the problem? That I'll explain this. And today we take it as a joke. We have, we don't bother about it. I'm not naming, but very recently, there was a couple who came for counseling and same thing has happened. But they, they don't, they don't uh, I mean, uh, uh, think that it was a crime or a sin or such a sin in which the prophet had taken his time. That a married woman, she was enticed, eloped, she eloped, and then the other person married her. And this is happening not only at the lower level, but at the higher level of the leadership in the uh, Muslim countries. Around 30 AD, Yahya rebuked him for divorcing his wife, Faisalis, and then unlawfully wedding Herodias, the name of that lady whom he was going to marry. His name was Herodias. Her name was Herodias. And she was his niece. And she was the wife of his father, already my uh, uh, brother. And she was already married. She was his niece. And he wanted him to take divorce. And he wanted to divorce his wife. And he wanted to marry, marry her. And he did it. Then what happened? Faisalis was also daughter of a king in the neighborhood, nearby, another uh, uh, I mean kingdom. Herod, Antipas' wife, Faisalis, fled to her father when she discovered her husband intended to divorce her in order to take a new wife, Herodias. Herodias was the mother of Salome. She was a dancer. Uh, this statement shows that when Faisalis ran away, she avoided divorce, and it means that Herod, who married afterwards, he had not yet divorced, and the lady had not accepted the divorce, but still he went for another wife. And that was a crime. That is a crime. We don't consider it a crime. Marriage is a partnership. It's a social contract. It's an act. If you have an act or a partnership, say in a business, in a shop, and one day, all of a sudden, you tell your partner that talaq, 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 and then she's gone. Your partner is gone. Your business partner is gone. Is it possible under any law, in any contract, any civil law? No. It's a partnership. Unless, if she accepts it willingly, okay, Mubarak, she can. But if she does not accept, the matter has to go to the court for adjudication that he is. And this has attained finality. But in this case, he didn't, he didn't do that. He, he didn't do that. Muslim family law and even criminal law is mainly based on the foundation of Jewish law. And this was the Jewish law at that time. That she was not divorced. She was still married, married um, wife of Herod. And Herod went for another wife. And that also illegally that he got the wife of another person, brother, divorced. But the history shows that he wanted this, but she was also not divorced. And he married her. And morally, you will find it that her daughter was Salome. She already had a daughter. Herodias was already married to his brother, Herod too. And this is a reference. Josephus now, when we refer to Josephus, we will find that in many books, people refer to Josephus. Josephus is, has very widely written history of Romans and Jews at that time. But we have to be very careful in quoting from Josephus. Josephus, when he retired, he was uh, sort of re-employed, given pension. And he was given a quarter in the palace. He was living in the palace when he was writing history. 
So he cannot be unbiased. There can be bias. Therefore, whenever I find a reference from Josephus, I try to cross-check. That is why I had earlier also given another reference, and there are many other references. Now, Josephus, Roman Jewish historian, states that John was executed by order of Herod Antipas in fortress in Jordan. But in actually, I have I'm not to use those words here. Actually, he is trying to cover up the action of Herod at that time. Action of Antipas. He says that he was not willing, but yet since the dancer Salome, his niece, uh, is the uh, uh, daughter of the wife, she had asked him. So he unwillingly ordered to uh, behead Hazrat Yahya Salam. But the crux of the matter is that he ordered to behead Yahya Salam. So why to quote all these details? It means that he was a biased writer. He was a biased historian who has written. Therefore, I verified it with others also. And except at this point, they all say that it was on the orders of uh, Herod. John had rebuked Herod Antipas for marrying Herodias. And Herodias demanded John's head. Herodias. This is in the gospel. Now this is written in the Injil. What we call Injil. Injil of Mark. There are many versions of Injil as we have many versions of Hadith. Therefore, we have to be very careful in quoting. Only four versions are presented to us. All other versions, they are hidden. But they are written. They are available if you go to Vatican or if you go to such library, you find them there. They are there. But we have to see that which version you are referring. You will find in the case when we discuss Isa alayhi salam that people usually refer to the uh, Injil which is called Egyptian Injil. We will refer to that also and there are many others but we are in uh, Injil of Barnabas and there are many others. At least there are 24 which are considered to be authentic but out of those, those 24 only 4 are printed. Only four are allowed in the market. Herodias' daughter Salome, the dancer, she danced before Herod, Antipas. And he was pleased with her dance. And he offers her, what do you want? Anything. At that time, kings and emperors used to do that. Salome, a girl, a young girl, she did not know what to ask for. She consulted her mother. What should I ask for? And mother Herodias, she had a venom against Yahya salam because he had opposed her marriage with Herod. And she tells her daughter Salome that you ask the emperor, the king, to give the head of Yahya salam And Yahya salam was already arrested. He was in jail. Because he had rebuked the king. And I, we find many references in the uh, New Testament that Herod was angry with him, that uh, he is preaching against the power, he's preaching against the empire, he's preaching against my kingdom. And people are uh, gradually uh, 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 gathering around him in numbers. So there will be a rebellion. He had arrested him. And he was in jail at that time. He immediately ordered. And in the jail, his, he was beheaded. And immediately, his head was brought on a plate. And it was presented to Herodias. This is how the story goes. She is told to demand the head of John, the Baptist. Herod orders, these are the words which are taken from Ayat uh, 17 to 29 from chapter 6 of the Gospel of Mark. Now instead of history, now I'm quoting from the Injil. John's disciples bury his body. And this is in another uh, uh, version of the Injil written by Matthew. Now this there, there uh, is a, a question uh, uh, is very important. A very important question comes up here. 
that he was beheaded in the jail then how his disciples buried his body but at another place we find that when he was beheaded his remaining body the corpse it was thrown out of the jail from over the wall of the uh, prison and we also know that in the story of hazrat yusuf alaihi salam when two persons uh, join him in the jail one of them he hazrat uh, yusuf alaihi salam tells him that you will uh, die and uh, uh, his body will be thrown away and it will be devoured by the birds so this 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 is how at that time the dead bodies in the prison were disposed of so this is how his dead body was disposed of theologian joseph benson another theologian he reports it seems that the body had been thrown over the prison walls without burial probably by order of herodias such a venom such a hatred and this was the custom at the time that how the dead bodies in the prison were disposed of josephus nesphorus these are historians different historians as i said that once i found that josephus is a, is a is the writer who has written uh, more than any other person but when i went into his history i found that no he is not an independent one the others must also be consulted josephus nisphorus and simeon say that herodias had got buried john's head in fortress they say that she had ordered that her his body should be buried because the disciples at that time and this appeals to some extent that the disciples were not there how would they know that he is being killed or his head has been uh, removed immediately and then they bury him so therefore to me it appears that the other historians these some some of the historians they seem to be right subsequently burial place of john's body was said to be byzantine church then they removed his body from there and they took it to a byzantine church and it was buried there some historians say and his relics being honored there in the 4th century you will find that what is happening to his body even after that and then this church was later converted into damascus mosque masjid muawiya umayyad masjid in damascus when you go there you find that in the masjid there's a grave and that they say that this is the grave of yahya alaihi salam so it in the 4th century his body was brought and then it was reburied in the masjid e umayyad muawiya in umayyad masjid in uh, damascus and it is there but the story does not end here other writers say that it was interred in herod's palace at jerusalem and then taken to emisa in to syria it was it went there uh, uh, to syria afterwards maybe this does not contradict but this is just giving another detail that it means that the body which is in the damascus may be the real real one umayyad mosque damascus now there are other claims also following claims to have the head of johnson john there are many churches in the world who claim that they have the head they have the relics of the head now umayyad mosque damascus is one of them church of san silvestro rome they say that we have the head and amiens cathedral france and then in munich also if you go to germany to munich they will show you that here is buried the head of yahya alaihi salam as you go to damascus mosque on the side they show you that here is the head of husain al salam which is buried here so that is how this is happening to uh, the head of uh, hazrat yahya al salam that there are at least four but there are many others also who claim that they have got the head john's left hand is claimed to be in armenian apostolic church of saint john at uh, uh, chinsura and also 
in West Bengal, India. India. And a bone of one of his left fingers is claimed to be at Nelson Atkins Museum of Art, Kansas City, Missouri. Missouri. So divergent claims. And this is happening to the relics of uh, Hazrat Muhammad, peace be upon him, to other uh, pious personalities in Islam also. You will find that we, we have a, a small hair in uh, Kashmir. We have such and such thing in Badshahi Masjid, Lahore. I have seen those things myself, but they claim that these are the relics from the Prophet or, or his family. Decapitation cloth of John is claimed to be at uh, uh, a cathedral in Germany. They claim that we have got his clothes in which he was killed. Relics claim to be John's mentioned in 11th to 16th century manuscripts were discovered in 1969 during restoration of church of uh, church in Egypt. Then the Coptic Christian Orthodox Church also claims to hold relics of John the Baptist. Now he is so important. He has a great following. Sabayin, Sabayun, Madainun. Some relics are claimed to reside in uh, uh, Ganza, uh, Gansar. I don't know how, how it is pronounced, uh, pronounced. Monastery's Cathedral of John the Baptist in Nagarno Karabakh, Central Asia. So many claimants, once he uh, I mean, became popular. The remains of John's are also alleged to have been transferred by Gregory, the illuminator, to the Saint Karapet Armenian Monastery. All around the world you will find, even in England. Another obscure claim, Halifax, England. They say that we have got the head. But what is the history? It's very difficult to reconcile and say that, no, this is the one. Different churches around the world commemorate John on different days. They don't have the date. And now they say that he was killed on such and such date. As we say, that Hazrat Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born on such and such date. And there's a dispute. He died on such and such date. And there's a dispute. There are so many theories, so many uh, uh, accounts. After him, in his name, many patrons, same pattern, orders and societies have been formed. In other words, in simple words, many sects have been formed. As we are Sunnis, Shias. So there are many Sunnis and Shias among the followers of Hazrat Yahya also. For example, Baptistines means religious order dedicated to memory of John. He is also claimed patron saint by Freemasons. You know the Freemason movement. Some people link it with Jews. And it is banned now. All, all around the world it is banned. If, if somebody is from in India or Pakistan, they would know that they had Freemason lodges there. And they are around the world. And some people claim they had a role in what happened in world war in the world wars and uh, how it happened and what was achieved what was done what is happening around the world at that time this is one of the group which is uh, i mean attributed these uh, things united kingdom john is patron of uh, cornwall scotland patron of perth many churches claim this that he is our saint he is our peer in in muslims we have peers we say he is the peer of Gambad Sharif, he is peer of Ranipur, he is peer of uh, so and so Sharif, he is peer of Ajmir, he is peer of so peer of so and so. So he is considered saint. In Christianity, they have saints for cities. On 23rd or 24th June, John is celebrated as patron saint of Porto, the second largest city in Portugal. All around the world you will find. And then he is Knights Hospitaller. Hospitaller. What is that? It is a military order. It is a military order. Not a, a, a simple civil order. Of Jerusalem, Malta, Florence, Cessna, Turin, Genoa. He has a great influence.
and in Americas, for example, I'll just read one line. John is patron saint of Commonwealth of Puerto Rico and its capital city, San, uh, San Juan, at the political level, at the state level, as we say, Islamic Republic of Iran, Islamic Republic of Pakistan. It is in his name that the state is claimed to be in his name. He is also patron of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Charleston, which covers the whole of South Carolina, United States. French Canada, Newfoundland, some of the innumerable cities that have John as patron, he's a list. If I give I mean, the names separately, there's a very long list. He's a saint patron. But we uh, don't really know that how much influence he has alongside, besides Hazrati Salaam. John in Gospels, how the Gospels say that. John is mentioned in all four canonical Gospels. According to Luke, John is the descendant of Harun. The, the name of his mother was Elizabeth, wife of Zakaria alayhi salam. We have mentioned that. And she was a relative of Maryam alayhi salam. She was aunt of Maryam. He was cousin of Hazrat Maryam. Matthew describes John as critical of Pharisees and Sadducees, Sunnis and Shias of that time of, among the Jews. He was critical of all those priests. He was challenging the priests and the power at the same time. He was against them. He was telling them that Yom Akhir is coming. Day of judgment is coming. Yom Din is coming. And you will be accountable. Don't fight among yourselves. Work for the Falah of the people. Matthew adds that John's death was reported to Jesus by his disciples. Jesus came to know about it, but he couldn't do anything. He was in Galilee and Hazrat was beheaded in Jordan. Mark holds Herod as killing John at Herodias' demand, but Matthew describes him as wanting John dead. Now, this gospel tells us, the Injil tells us that Herod was so against Yahya that he himself wanted to eliminate him. But immediate cause came before him when Herodias, his new wife, on the uh, demand of Salome, she demanded that he should be beheaded. That, but actually he himself wanted to kill him because he had already arrested him. And he immediately ordered and it was immediately Im Im implemented. Herod, because why? Because Herod feared increasing influence of John as people were turning to him in greater numbers. This is political science. John was imprisoned at uh, uh, Machiris, where he was put to death. This is science, political science. And Josephus says John's public influence made Antipas fearful of a rebellion as they became fearful of a rebellion of Isa alayhi salam. That was politics of that time, which was involved in the background. Otherwise, Isa alayhi salam had not committed any crime. New Testament accounts report that some of Jesus' early followers had previously been followers of John. John had, Hazrat Yahya alayhi salam had laid ground for Isa alayhi salam. And Hazrat Isa alayhi salam took over. But he also immediately was executed. Now, his prophethood. Quran speaks of Yahya's gentle piety, not proud piety. We become very proud when we become pious. We have a, a, a sign on the face, on the forehead. We show to the people. We show our salat. We show our zakat. We show off our prayers that he had a gentle piety and love and his humble attitude towards life. In small words, if we can say, it is purity of life. Surah 19 and Ayah 13 to 15. Pure piety of life, pure piety. <clears throat> he was pure and devout. 
in the other books also of Bible, he has been described as pure and devout and walk well in the presence of God. God consciousness to walk in the presence of God is a phrase which has the meaning equivalent to God consciousness that you do everything. Even if you walk, you are conscious of God. You sleep, you are conscious of God. You eat, you are conscious of God. You walk, you are conscious of God. That phrase consciousness, taqwa, that is translated in the Bible here as well in the presence of God. He was conscious of the presence of God every time. He was dutiful towards his parents. He is a model of uh, being obedient to the parents. If you want to teach your children the piety and also the dutifulness, obedience to parents, teach them the history of Yahya Allah, how he behaved. Go into those details. We have not gone into those details here. And then he was not arrogant. He was not rebellious. Quran tells us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. He is the one who has been admired. He has been admired for his qualities by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. That these were his attributes. John's reading and understanding of the scriptures. Zikr, Yahya. When only a child surpassed even that of the greatest scholars of the time. Quran tells us that when he was a child, Sabiyan, he was given hikmat. And that thing has been reported in the Bible also. That as a child, he had hikmat, he had wisdom. He was speaking the word of God. He was conveying the word of God, explaining the word of God. <clears throat> Background challenge to the power and palace. Background of this thing was that he challenged power and palace both at the same time. Priests and the palace. Hazrat Isa salam, also challenged both Roman Empire and the priests, Saint Hadrian, uh, the Masjid Committee, the rabbis, and the priests at the same time. Antipas had married daughter of King Antipas, uh, Eritas IV of Nabatia. Uh, I have mentioned that the daughter of another king nearby, she was married to her, him and he wanted to divorce her. And he was Erita, his name was Eritas. On a visit to Rome, Antipas fell in love with that, with Herodias, wife of his brother. And he, uh, I mean, I mentioned the details that how he married him, married her. When his daughter came safe in custody, when she ran away, the first wife of Herod, uh, Eritas, Herod, uh, Herod, Antipas, she ran away to her father, Eritas, and then he declared a war on Herod. There are details of this war. I'm not mentioning it was a political event. It became a political event on the one hand that his, his wife, uh, his daughter was being divorced and he reacted. There was a war, there was a lot of destruction. And on the other hand, that was, that annoyed more the Herod, Antipas, and he turned against Yahya alayhi salam. That so much destruction has been caused because of his fatwa. According to Josephus, this is the name of the writing book, Antiquities of the Jews, Herodias divorced herself from her husband while he was alive. Now he is trying to save him, save her, save and save Herod also. This is a saving because as I told that Josephus was the pensioner. He was living in the quarters of the, of the palace and he was being paid and he had written the history. So we have to take it very carefully that what he is writing. This is a biased statement that uh, no, she had taken a divorce. But what others say? Others say, say no, but she was not divorced. She was still the wife. Gospels state that Yahya alayhi salam object to Herod's marriage with Herodias as contrary to Jewish, Jewish law at that time. It was incestuous as Herodias was also Antipas' niece. John also rebuked him 
that she was his brother's wife and not yet divorced. This is Mark. So for us, Injil is more authentic comparably than the Josephus. She was not divorced. Antipas and Herodias married while Herod too was still alive. The husband was alive. Her husband was still alive, but he married her. And you have seen one of the politicians becoming prime minister married another person's wife, got her divorced, and people said he married her during Iddat. Between 34 and 36 AD, conflict with Eritas of Nabatia, caused by Antipas' divorce of Eritas' daughter, which I've already mentioned, and territorial disagreement developed into war. Antipas' army suffered a devastating defeat, and people were happy at that time that Eritas, that uh, Herod was uh, defeated. There was a great destruction. In later developments, Antipas was exiled. Now look how he's being punished. I had uh, elaborated that all those persons who were involved in the execution of Yahya salam and Isa salam and Zakaria salam, they all made a very bad faith, disgraceful. They were exiled. They were dishonored. They were killed. They themselves were executed and within three to four hours, they all finished. The governor, the, the amil, the, the uh, officers, the uh, kings, the emperors, they all removed. Now, in later developments, Antipas was exiled. And according to some accounts, he was killed. Same Antipas. Some believe that Herod Antipas later miseries and destruction of his army came from God. It was a God sent punishment to all these people. If it was one, one could say that it's an incident. But all those persons in line, right from Pilot to everybody, they were killed or they were dishonored. Now, as I say, there's a dream door we have kept open. One of the Sheikh al Islam today, not only one, but there are many who claim that I saw in a dream, the Prophet came, I died, and he came, he said that, Why are you, where are you going? And he kept, this is on the television, on the videos, written, you have seen that, something very viral, written, that the, the uh, angels told him, told uh, uh, them that uh, uh, he, has he's, he has died and we are taking his dead body. And he said, no. The prophet said, no. I will not allow him to die. And go and tell God, that I am not allowing him to die. And then he was saved. There's a detailed story which he has himself, himself narrated. I have myself uh, I heard it. You must have seen that. And then he's Sheikh islam same thing happened with St. Paul. He came and claimed that Isa alayhi salam. He was raised from the grave and he told him that now you take up my mission and the Pauline Christianity today, which we have in majority, that is there. Another claim here. There are thousands of claims in Muslims, but in, in, in Christianity here. In which year? 1829. 1829 years after the death of Isa alayhi salam and Yahya alayhi salam. What is the story of the dream? Church of Jesus Christ of latter day saints who are Unitarians. They are not Trinitarians. They don't believe in Trinity. Church of Jesus Christ of latter day saints believe that John the Baptist appeared on the bank of a river near Harmony Township in Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, as a resurrected being, Jaya alayhi salam rose from, uh, uh, became alive. And then he spoke to Joseph, uh, Joseph Smith and Oliver Cowdery, two persons. On 15th May, 1829, and ordained them to the Aaronic priesthood. Now you go and you are priests from my side. They became the saints. They are worshipped. They are peers now. 
they are dead now but they are peers they have churches and this is not one case in christianity there are thousands of cases in muslim world also because we have kept the door of dream open at tomorrow anybody can say and claim people claim that i have seen this in dream the prophet peace be upon him has given me this sword and he asked me to kill so and so and they do that this is on record this is in the courts this is in the cases because we encourage that now look at this uh, uh history i have given the, the references with this we come to the conclusion of the discussion on the history of yahya alay salam with the hope allah may guide, give us guidance that we at least do one thing that we close this door of dreams in which people claim commit kazb and claim that prophet any prophet had asked them to do this thing which is kazb allah may save us subhan rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifun wa salamun ala al mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اللهم اهدنا في من هديت واعفنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك اللهم لنا فيما اعطيت وقنا واصرف عنا شر ما قضيت فانك يا ربنا تقضي بالحق ولا يقضى عليه اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم اجعلنا ممن يستمعون القول فيتبعون احسنه اللهم اكفنا بحلالك عن حرامك وبطاعتك عن معصيتك وفضلك عن من سواك اللهم فضلك ورحمتك على كلمة الحق والدين اللهم انصر الإسلام وعز المسلمين يا أكرم الأكرمين Oh Allah, spread your mercy upon us shower us with your blessings increase our knowledge, grant us forgiveness and reward us with the company of the prophets in the Firdaus al-A'la Oh Allah, forgive our parents and all our friends and relatives who have passed away Oh Allah, grant them your mercy make their graves a garden from heaven and grant them the Firdaus al-A'la Oh Allah, remedy our son Ma'arad and our daughter Aisha Wani and all our friends and relatives who are sick. Oh Allah, grant them full and speedy recovery. Oh Allah, guide our children, protect them and make them righteous. Oh Allah, we ask you with every name you have elected for yourself that none of us leave this gathering, but his pains have been relieved, his worries have been removed, his debts have been paid, His weaknesses have been concealed, his sins have been forgiven, and his needs have been fulfilled. Subhanallah wa bihamdih, adada khalqih wa rida nafsih wa zinata arshih wa midada kalimatih. Subhanallah wa bihamdih, adada khalqih wa rida nafsih wa zinata arshih wa midada kalimatih. Subhanallah wa bihamdih, adada khalqih wa rida nafsih wa zinata arshih wa midada kalimatih. Wal asf, inna al-insana la fi khus, illa al-lazina amanu wa amanu al-salihat, wa tawasab bil-haq, wa tawasab bil-sabr. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير المرسلين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والسلام عليكم ورحمة